Hello. Welcome to my How to Beat series in Monster Hunter Rise, where I will cover each monster. These videos will cover many aspects of the monster, and the first section of each video will showcase the monster's attacks and animations, a sort of how-to if the nitty-gritty of math and some other numbers isn't really your thing. At least the good part is up front. So, let's get started. Today we have... Nagakuga is one of the fastest, if not the fastest, monster in Monster Hunter Rise. Before Sunbreak, the Nagakuga weapons were the most commonly used ones, with their high sharpness and affinity, paired with decent raw damage. I've fought my fair share of this beast, and even after nearly 30 completed hunts on the PC alone, it can still be pretty annoying to deal with Nagakuga's animations and attacks. While it no longer causes the bleed status as it did in previous titles, Nargakuka still provides a tough fight for those of us who aren't willing to exercise a touch of patience during this fight. With its rapid attacks, lengthy combos, and wide reach, it's easy to be caught off guard the second after you feel like you're coming out on top. So before we get into Nargakuga's attacks and animations, it's worth covering a few key aspects of this fight. Nargakuga comes in two main states. There's the regular form, and the enraged form, which denoted by the large red eyes and trails at least behind like some angry anime villain, is pretty easy to recognize. While enraged, some attacks will change in speed and number, leading to lengthier combos and less time for us to fight back. However, while it's not enraged, pitfall traps are almost useless, as a lot of its attacks can break them. But while enraged, they tend to work a bit more often. This rule does not apply to shock traps. Those work as intended across the board. Sonic Bombs can lead to a safe flinch, though it's hard to capitalize on this unless you're a Sword and Shield user or need a moment to heal. It's also worth noting that weapons with green sharpness or lower will bounce off the cut wings. Flash Pods and Bugs are useful, however it's worth knowing that flashing Nargakuga will cause its rage meter to fill substantially, usually leading to an instant enraged state once it comes back to reality. Nargakuga is notorious for not being in the spotlight, and will very often leap out of view of your camera. So, if you're playing with camera lock, this will become incredibly useful as it will keep your camera honed in on Nargakuga. Lastly, Nargakuga will activate the spikes on the tip of its tail. This will increase the damage of all of its tail attacks and open up one more, which we're going to cover soon. The first attack on our list is a very quick bite. This move is pretty telegraphed with a little wiggle of its head, which will lead into a straightforward attack. It's pretty easily dodged by moving to either side. But in Master Rank, this move evolves into the Nargakuga Slide. It has the same beginning, but it will lead into a longer chain of attacks that causes Nargakuga to move forward quite a ways, so be ready to get out of this. There are a few pouncing based attacks, each using slashing from its arm blades. Nargakuga will take on a true pouncing form and lash out with a single swipe. When enraged, this move will happen up to three times, so it's best to move off to the side if you're close enough to avoid the first attack or beneath the wing and past the chain entirely. If you see Nargakuga leap backwards, it's about to do a slower, more powerful version of this previous attack. Be ready to perform the same evasive maneuvers here. Similar to the leaping slashes, it can perform a leaping bite. This attack deals high damage and can knock us back, so be ready to get out of the way. Nargakuga will bring its tail off to one side as it prepares a sweeping attack. If the tail is intact, it will cover more ground. Either way, it's best to back off if you have enough space between you already or roll towards the side the tail is coming from to avoid the move. If you see it lift its head and open its mouth a bit, it's about to Tokyo Drift. While enraged, this move will happen twice in a row, so be sure to time your counters and rolls accordingly. If you hear a slight snarl from Nagakuga, be prepared to roll off to the side. It will leap in the air and slam its tail down. It does have some homing on it, but a quick reaction can handle this. Similar to the tail slam, if you see Nagakuga begin to prowl to one side, it's about to do a stronger version of the tail slam. This time it will happen twice, deal more damage, and can easily KO us if our defense or our health are already low. For both of the tail slams, it will get stuck at the very end, giving us a few seconds to counterattack the tail, and in Master Rank, the second tail slam happens after a slight delay, so be prepared for that. Now and then it will begin to twirl its tail above its head. It will soon fire quills out in a line a fair distance. If you're in melee range, this move will pretty much miss as it has a minimum distance it has to travel. 
and in higher ranks this move will happen twice in a row. These quills can deal some damage, but the true danger lies in the fact that they can stun us if we're not prepared. Stun resistance prevents this, and upon landing the quills will remain in the ground for some time. Stepping on them can deal the same damage and stun us as well, so be mindful of their locations. And that's it. Nargakuga's attacks are really only annoying because they happen so quickly, and they happen to take up a lot of space. But this can be easily countered by bringing it into a narrow area. This will limit the amount of room it can travel, and it makes the whole camera situation a little bit easier to manage. When it comes to Nargakuga's weaknesses, Thunder is our best option for elemental damage, with all but water taking second place evenly. The head is also the weakest spot on Nargakuga, so if your plan is to raw damage brute force your way through the fight, that should be your focus. Poison comes in at 150 base, building up 100 until we hit 550 max. The damage varies here with low rank doing 200 damage, high rank doing 280, and master rank being 600 damage over the course of 20 seconds. Stun comes in at 150 base, there's 120 build up until we hit 630 maximum. Nargakuga will be stunned for 10 seconds. Paralysis starts at 180 base, building up 130 until we hit a max of 570. Just like stun, it's paralyzed for 10 seconds. Sleep as well will start at 150 base, though it builds up only at 100 until it hits 550 max. Just like all the others so far, it's only asleep for 40 seconds. Blast is pretty good, starting at a low 70 base, building up only 30 until we hit 670 max. Blast will deal 100 damage as well. Hey, it's Future Soul here. I forgot to capture the exhaust portion, so here it is. Starts at 225, going up by 75 each exhaust until we hit a max of 900. During our fight with Nargakuga, the place we're attacking matters for the sake of our damage multipliers. As it stands, Blunt and Slashing take the cake for the head and forelegs, with the other values being close enough to not make that much of a difference. Looking at this list, we have an interesting assortment of choices here. Like most fights, values are split with the forelegs and arm blades, as well as the tail and tail tip, with the second values leading to full breaks or severs. What makes this fight interesting is the amount of control that we can have when it comes to breaking these parts. We can secure a number of flinches with breaks of the head, forelegs, and tail, even after a full break or sever. Topples are also possible with the breaking of each cutwing, making it incredibly useful to stagger their breaks for maximum uptime. The hindlings can also topple when their values reset after hitting zero. Again, like all these charts, the total HP values are averages across five solo hunts. So the values here will vary depending on monster size as well as player counts. The more players in the hunt, the more HP, anywhere between 1.4 and 2.5 times. In my opinion, Nargakuga is an incredible fight for us. I've spent hours upon hours fighting this monster specifically when reaching the base endgame of Monster Hunter Rise. With its rapid movesets, lengthy attack chains, and large area of effects, it's an interesting challenge when compared to other fights. Keep your weapon sharp, be mindful of its positioning, and wait for the few moments you have to retaliate, and you'll do fine. Thunder weapons are our best bet here for full damage, and certain statuses like Poison or Blast can put in a fair amount of work for us here as well. Using the terrain to our advantage here will help us out a lot. Though it may be more challenging to dodge the attacks coming our way, Nagakuga won't be able to cover as much ground. If you've made it this far in the video, I really appreciate it. Consider giving it a like. It'll help the video reach more people and it lets me know you enjoy this type of stuff. Like always, I plan to do every single monster in Monster Hunter Rise, but which do you want to see next? Let me know in the comments below, and until next time, happy hunting.